<coughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit sharp, a little bit um, burn going down. But that's good. That's like hugging hugging a saguaro. Don't hug saguaros. That's not that's not a good thing. Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. Another video, another whiskey, and another journey. Today we're actually heading south of my hometown of Phoenix, Arizona, and we're gonna go down to Tucson. Delbach. This is their classic version. This is coming in at 46 ABV. This is a non-chill filtered whiskey, American single malt. Doesn't say anything about natural color. Doesn't have an age statement, but according to the master distiller down there, Mark Viertaler, these sit in American oak casks for 10 to 15 months. They use 15 gallon barrels instead of the standard 53, which apparently they've got to be pretty careful of because of the uh, temperature fluctuations down in Arizona or in Arizona, down in Tucson, they can fluctuate. Wow, that's, uh, that's really heavy on the spice. The temperatures can fluctuate anywhere from 30 degrees. So there's a lot of extraction happening from day to day. And I, and I don't think they can keep these things in a 15 gallon barrel much longer than the 10 to 15 months that they're already there. With a 15 gallon barrel, you have more service area to whiskey. So you have more influence, more barrel influence. And if it was a 53 gallon barrel, there is less whiskey coming in contact with the barrel itself based on how much whiskey is actually in there. So they really have to uh, keep a close eye on this. Being in the barrel from uh, 10 to 15 months, when they're ready to bottle it, just like they do with Stranahan, they have a volunteer program. And somebody had written on here, uh, D-R-A-M, DRAM. This is batch C22-1. And if you want to volunteer and help them with the bottling, you can get onto their website and then go ahead and sign up. So I'm getting a lot of, a lot of spice on this. The one that I reviewed previous to this one, the Westward, the Westward was very fruit forward, and this one seems to be, and I have a whole bunch of spices here because I've, I've been in, in, to, in and out of this, uh, this bottle uh, for a while now. The spices that are on here are Christmas spices to me. And just to double check, I have allspice, nutmeg, orange peel, cloves, and cinnamon. And when I'm smelling each individual spice, I can't really necessarily pick out each one, but if I'm smelling them all together, <laughs> this is a, a spice bomb. That's kind of what it smells like. Just a whole bunch of spices thrown together. And that's what you get. And on the very back end of it, I'm getting a little bit of apple. So there's a little bit of fruit on the nose, but it's mainly spice. Let's go ahead and give this a taste. That's pretty sharp. When that hits your throat, there's a little bit of a burn there, but that spice is coming through. I think the uh, the fruitness, uh, the fruitiness of that uh, is there as well. Actually, that's pretty well balanced. That fruit and spice kind of hit hit together, and the finish. The finish is pretty quick. It's it's pretty much gone already. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let me go ahead and add a little bit of water to this and see if anything happens. This is coming in at 46, so let's go ahead and put two little bits of uh, water in there. Let that sit for a little bit. Now, Mark Viertaler, uh, I read an article where he gives credit to his, to his lead distiller and all of his production distillers. So the lead distiller, Dustin Cox, the production distiller, Abby Fife, and Raymond Hammond. He's basically saying those guys are, and that lady um, is running the show. He basically just shows up and they do all the work. So I'm giving him credit for giving other people credit for this whiskey, but obviously he must be doing something. Otherwise they wouldn't uh, keep, him, keep him around. Okay, so now I'm getting a little bit more fruit than spice. That apple's now coming through. The spice is still there but the apple I think is a little bit more prominent. Now adding water to whiskey, this is something that you guys are gonna have to do. Add water, drink it neat, add water to it, a couple drops at a time, put some ice in it if you're inclined to put ice in it. Figure out how you want to drink the whiskey. Don't let anybody tell you, you know, how you should be drinking it. Drink it the way that you want. 
uh, is going into your mouth. They're not drinking it. Well, they might be drinking it with you, but they're not in your mouth while you're drinking. So drink it the way that you want and don't let people tell you how you should and should not be drinking the whiskey. So let's go ahead and give this a taste. Yeah, that opened up a little bit. Now I'm getting a little bit more, I don't know, floral. It's clinging to my tongue a little bit more. And the adding water to whiskey, there's water-soluble particles and non-water-soluble particles. When you put water in there, the water-soluble particles will start to react with the whiskey and push all of the oils up to the top. So be careful, this, this will change, sometimes will change the flavor profile of the whiskey. And in this case, it, do, it did change it. The Westward that I did last time, the water just kind of killed everything. This one actually enhances a little bit more of the, the aromas, changes it. Same thing on the palate, same thing on the, uh, the finish. Yeah, it's a little bit of a, of a different whiskey. Um, it's still it's still punching at, at 46 ABV. I don't think those two straws of water killed the taste in any way. So that's pretty good. Uh, let's see what else we have. Um, they have a core line. Uh, they have the Delbot Classic. They have the Old Pueblo. And then they also have the Dorado, which is their mesquite smoked barley whiskey. Now, the story has it that the owner, um, Stephen Paul, had a furniture business, a mesquite furniture business that he ran for 30 years. Actually, I don't even know if he's still doing that. But they were at a barbecue in their backyard, and his wife mentioned, hey, why do they always have to use peat to dry the, the barley? Why don't, why, why don't they try something else? So he got to tinkering, messed around with the formula or the recipe for a while, and eventually started to producing the Dorado, and that is their mesquite smoked whiskey. I haven't tried it yet, but I believe it has won some awards. People rave about it. That'll probably be something that I try next. Well, I've got a lot of stuff back there, but it'll, it'll be on my list to try. All right, see, what else can I say on this? Uh, Delbach is coming in at at $53, again, I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, and the big box stores are selling this. So Total Wine and & More and BevMo. Obviously, uh, your area might be a little bit different than mine. And the name Delbach uh, threw me for a second. I'm like, how in the world can somebody come up with the word Delbach? That doesn't make any sense to me. And they're saying that the word Delbach is an, I'm going to read, read directly from the label. Uh, Delbach is an ancient term meaning from the place where the river reappears in the sand. So the Tucson Mission San Xavier Delbach was named for its location on the Santa Cruz River, where groundwater surfaced to give the desert life. So I don't know if the ancient word Delbach is or Spanish in origin. I don't know. All I know is it's a good taste in whiskey. American single malt. It's it's amazing. To, to me right now, just being new into the whiskey. I am amazed on how the same process, the, basically the same process, can yield so many different flavor profiles. Sharp, pretty bitey, pretty spicy, a little bit of fruit, finishes rather quick, coming in at 46 ABV. I'd say that's a pretty good whiskey, nice and balanced. I definitely drink this. Well, as you can tell, <laughs> I'm moving along the bottle pretty well. So I think that's where I'm going to leave it today. If you guys have any experience with this whiskey, leave me some comments down below. If you know somebody that's in the whiskey world and you think they might be interested in a review like this, why don't you go ahead and share this uh, video with them. If you're watching the video and you're not a subscriber, subscribe to the channel if you think you're uh, going to be interested in some more uh, whiskey reviews. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Enjoy your journey. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. <coughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a little bit sharp, a little bit um, burn going down. But that's good. That's like 
hugging, hugging a saguaro. Don't hug saguaros. That's not, that's not a good thing, but the whiskey is good. We'll see you guys later. Bye.